We're going to add on to what we've looked at with rotational systems and systems with gears, and now we'll consider electromechanical systems. So by definition, an electromechanical system is one with electrical input and mechanical output. So here's an example. Electrical input will cause uh, translation to this locking mechanism. And so we have electrical input and mechanical output. The system that we're going to examine in this video is a DC servo motor. So we want to find the transfer function, which relates the motor displacement to the applied voltage. And we're going to go through that process. So this slide looks at the electrical properties of the system. Here is a schematic representing a DC motor. And it can be considered as a uh, a resistance in series with an inductance in series with a voltage source. And across those terminals is the applied voltage, EA. So RA is the armature resistance, LA is the armature inductance, and VB is what's referred to as the back EMF. And the output of this system is shown here. We have torque and displacement, so theta m and tau m. In order to develop this transfer function, we need to look first at the electrical properties. So the current flows through the armature. And whenever we have uh, this current flowing through uh, the conductor in a fixed mag or in a magnetic field, then the conductor is going to feel a force or a torque. And so that torque is what turns the rotor. But whenever the rotor turns, we have a conductor that's moving in a magnetic field and this generates a voltage and that's where the back EMF comes from and here's an expression relating the back EMF to motor speed KB is the back EMF constant or sometimes called the speed constant so we can take the Laplace equation of this system I'm sorry Laplace transform of this system and get the loop equation and we have here the inductor resistance times, I'm sorry, armature resistance times armature current plus armature inductance times S times armature current plus the back EMF is all that's equal to the applied voltage. So we want to relate the displacement to the applied voltage. So we'll need to consider the mechanical system in order to obtain expressions for displacement. So we need to consider the mechanical behavior. The motor torque is proportional to the current through the armature. And KT is referred to as the motor torque constant. And this is different for every motor. Just like the, the speed constant, KB, is different for every motor. All the motor parameters vary with motor design. So motors are typically in systems like this where we have the motor with armature moment of inertia and armature damping and it's connected through gearing to a load and that has a moment of inertia from the load and damping from the load. Basically it has these mechanical impedances on the load. So we want to find an equivalent system in order to simplify the analysis. So here's the equivalent system. We just have uh, what we refer to as JM. So the the uh, moment of inertia, and then CM, so th the equivalent damping. So JM is just JA plus the reflected load inertia, and CM, or DM in this figure, is just DA plus the reflected DL. And using that equivalent system, we get the transfer function between the motor displacement and motor torque. So we have JM S squared plus CM times S is the sum of the mechanical impedances. And again, JM and CM comprise JA, well, JM comprises JA and reflected JL, and CM comprises CA and reflected CO. Again, I'm using C instead of D for the damping. Now let's revisit the loop equation. This was from a previous slide. And we have now, from the last slide, an expression relating the armature current to the motor displacement. And 
the back EMF expression, we have VB related to the motor displacement. So now we can substitute these in and relate motor displacement to applied voltage. We'll also assume that the armature inductance LA is small relative to the other terms. So we'll eliminate that term and get the following transfer function relating motor displacement to applied voltage. So we have several constant terms in this expression. We have the motor torque constant, the armature resistance, the effective moment of inertia, effective damping, effective inertia, and the back EMF or speed constant. So this transfer function has a simple form. It's just K over S times S plus alpha. But <clears throat> we might not have the parameters for the motor, such as the speed constant, the torque constant, or the armature resistance. <clears throat> So we can obtain all the constants from this, or all the motor constants from this expression by measuring motor speed and torque at a given voltage. So we could use a dynamometer to measure the torque and speed. And if we know the voltage, then we can get these constant terms. So again, we'll assume that LA is equal to zero, and we'll substitute in what we had before for the armature current and the back EMF in order to get this expression. So our terms are the motor torque, motor displacement, and the applied voltage. And now we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this and also assume that the applied voltage is constant, so it's DC voltage, and the system has reached steady state. So in that case, none of these are functions of time. The motor torque and the motor speed, they're going to be constant with time, so they won't change with time for a given voltage. And so here's that expression again, relating motor torque to motor speed and the applied voltage. So we get that torque is proportional to the motor speed at steady state. And to see that, here's the expression rearranged, so torque as a function of motor speed and voltage. And if we were to plot this line, it, would, it looks like this. The intercepts, the y-intercept is what's called the stall torque, and the x-intercept is the no load speed. And so from this expression, we can get our parameters that we need for the transfer function. So the motor torque constant divided by the armature resistance, we can get by considering the performance whenever the motor is not moving, so that would be stall torque. So at this point here, so if omega m is zero, then we get that kT over Ra is a stall torque over Ea. And likewise, if we consider the point where there's no torque being generated or applied to the motor, then motor torque is zero, and we get that kB is Ea divided by the no load speed. So for different values of Ea, we'd have different curves. So at a higher voltage, we'd have this curve. Lower voltage, we'd have this curve. And now I want to do an example that pulls all this together. So we'll tr find the transfer function for this system. So mechanically, here's the system. We have a motor. It has armature inductance, 5 kilogram meter squared. It has armature damping, 2. And it goes through a 5 to 1 uh, gear ratio, or gear pair. And then the load moment of inertia is 700 the load damping is 200. And here it are the results from dynamometer testing or the speed torque curve for this motor. So at 50 volts, the stall torque is 100 newton meters and the no load speed is 150 radians per second. And we want to find the transfer function. So, well, actually we want to find, um, yeah, the transfer function of the load displacement to the applied voltage. So this would be theta L and this is theta M. Okay. So to start off we want to find the equivalent mechanical system. So we'd that would look like we'd have the motor torque, 
going into unaffective inertia, JM, and it has effective damping, CM. Now JM is equal to the armature moment of inertia, so 5 plus the reflected load inertia. And that reflected parameter would be the destination number of gears divided by the source number of gears. So that's 100 divided by 500, and then we square that quotient. And multiply that by the load moment of inertia, 700. And that equals 32. And the effective damping, CM, is just 2 plus the reflected load damping. So again, we have 100 over 500 squared times 200. And this is 10. Okay. Now we need to get the motor parameters. And so we know that KT over RA is the no load speed divided by the voltage, so we have 100 over 50, so that's 2. And also the back EMF constant is the, I'm sorry, did I say no load speed? I meant stall torque. Stall torque divided by voltage. Here we have the voltage divided by the no load speed, so 50 divided by 150, so that's one third. Alright, and we can now use our expression for the transfer function, but again this, well, but note that this relates the motor displacement to the applied voltage. So this equation here relates the motor displacement to the applied voltage. And here are the equations for the motor parameters that we used. Okay. So plugging in the values that we had, 2 over 32 divided by S times S plus 1 over 32 times 10 plus 2 thirds. Okay. So KT over RA was 2 and 1 over JM is 1 over 32. So that's our numerator, 2 over 32. And 1 over JM, again we had 1 over 32. And CM is 10, KT over RA is 2, and KB, I'm sorry, KB is 1 third, and KT over RA is 2. So 10 plus 2 thirds. <coughs> but now we want, um, we want to get the load displacement. So we look at the gear ratio. So the gear ratio says that the input speed divided, oops, input speed would be theta m, divide, or omega m, but anyway, it's the same for displacement. Input speed, or input displacement divided by load displacement is equal to the number of teeth on the output gear divided by the number of teeth on the input gear. So 500 over 100 is 5. So that gives us that theta m is 5 times theta l. So we get that our transfer function theta L divided by EA is just this divided by 5. So 0 0.0125 divided by S times S plus 0 0.333. So now if we know the voltage that we're applying to our motor, the terminals of our motor, we can find out what the displacement for the load is given uh, a certain motor and loading system. <coughs>